What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 18 beta 5 to registered developers and soon to public beta testers. Now along with this release, Apple also dropped the fifth beta for iPadOS 18, watchOS 11, macOS Sequoia, tvOS 18, and visionOS 2. But of course in this video we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS 18 beta 5. Now you can see the size of this update came in at a relatively large 1.87 gigabytes on my iPhone 15 plus and just a quick reminder if you're on iOS 18.1 beta 1 if you're on the iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max you will not get this update because you're on a version higher which is 18.1 not 18.0 so anyways let's go ahead and check out the build number for this new update if we head into our general section and go to about 18.0 the new build number is 22A5326F so we went from a J at the end of the build number in the previous beta to F here in beta 5. And then as far as the modem firmware, that also received a minor update here to 2.16.02. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 18 beta 5? And the first thing is that we have two new icons, two new app icons here for Maps and Find My. So you can see how those looked in beta 4 and now how those look here in beta 5. So a big change to the Maps and then a much smaller change to the Find My icon. Those are both new. And then we have a pretty big change inside of the Photos application. So the Photos app in iOS 18 has been very confusing for pretty much everybody. And I think the biggest thing that people were confused by was swiping over. So before in iOS 18 and all the previous betas, if you swipe over, you would be able to go to different albums and different collections that you had set up. However, it seems like a lot of people didn't know you could do that. And it was very confusing from a UX standpoint. So Apple has gotten rid of that here in beta 5, so you can no longer swipe over. You can see everything is now scrolling up and down. So our full grid now shows like this. So there's a slight difference here. You can see a few more photos than normal here in the you know main library page under all. And then when you swipe down, we have those collections that before you would swipe over for. So these are customizable. Recent days, you can see it's a bit smaller now. Also the uh, albums here the recent days albums are smaller so before only one and a half would fit on the screen now three and a quarter fit on a screen the people and pets section is also a little bit different so these are also a little bit smaller and then below that we have the pinned collections and then memories and if we go all the way down we have some changes in here as well so number one the wallpaper suggestions are now working and they show up down here at the bottom also down at the bottom before it said customize we had this little customize button but now it says customize and reorder and it's a big button and it's also bold the font is bold now whereas before it was just normal font you know weight and if we tap on that we have a new interface here as well a much more simple interface it's pretty much the same it's just what this showed at the bottom before you had this different section up top which is how you could change you know the order of the pages that you would swipe between but now with beta 5 you don't have that swiping mechanism to go through different collections anymore so we just have this option now to customize and reorder also now the reset button is in the top left instead of on the top right like it was in beta 4. Also, you can see that we now have a description of what this section is. So it says reorder or hide collections to personalize your view. Oh, and you'll also notice that we have a recently saved section under the recent days collection. I know it's kind of confusing saying these terms, but you can see that when you tap on that, it now shows what was saved today. Whereas, you know, your saved attachments or your saved images would not show there before. But easily the biggest feature in iOS 18 beta 5 is distraction control. And this is a new feature in Safari that was originally shown off at the Worldwide Developers Conference, but we had not seen it live up until today. So if you tap on this right here in the address bar, you now have the option to hide hide distracting items when you tap on that you get this little interface down here that says select an item so this is always so annoying the sign in with Google pop up that always pops up let's tap on that and you get the option to hide and check out how we Thanos snap this we're gonna hide and boom we get that awesome animation there and that's gone now also this bottom bar that's annoying let's hide that 
This ad right here, let's go ahead and hide that as well. That whole big box, yeah, let's hide that. This ad, let's hide that. So it's not really an ad blocker because the ads will still load the next time you refresh the page or the next time you go onto a website because those ads change dynamically. So it's not technically an ad block replacement, but this is just meant more for hiding distracting elements on a web page. Things that do not change dynamically every time you go to that website. So things like the cookie banners, things like, you know, the sign in page that we saw earlier, just different elements on a site that are not going to change every time you visit that website. It's meant to reduce distractions. It's not meant to be a built-in ad blocker, but it is nice that what you hid will continue to remain hidden for future visits as long as it's not something that changes dynamically every time you visit that website, such as an advertisement. Again, it's meant more for specific elements on a website that do not change. Now, we also have some changes in the control center. So if you pull down the control center, we now have multiple changes. So number one, you'll notice that the icons themselves are larger. So the little glyph icon inside of the circles is larger now. So you can see this throughout these. You can really see it more when we go to add a control so you can see them side by side. But if you take a look at these, you can see, especially with airplane mode and all that, you can just see how much bigger that airplane is than before. And that goes for pretty much everything is bigger now in beta five. But we do have some other changes here as well to the icons themselves. So you might've seen that right there. Cellular data now has a new icon in beta five. It just has bars instead of what it had previously the low power mode icon it now has less battery so it's more realistic than before where it had you know almost half of the battery remaining and you can see that the outline of the battery on low power mode is also thicker and a little bit less opaque down here we have screen mirroring that has also been changed so the icon looks a little bit more modern than it did in beta 4. again you can see the bigger icons here for clock so alarm timer and stopwatch all of those icons are larger now in beta 5 than they were in beta 4. we have changes to orientation lock and screen recording so orientation lock you can see the arrow around is a little bit thicker and it's also less opaque screen recording the outer circle is less opaque and also thicker there's a new glyph for ping my watch so it now shows a watch with a slash through it instead of what it showed previously for guided access you can see that the lock is much bigger than it was in beta 4 and then for live speech the keyboard is more opaque than it was previously and the little speech glyph down there in the bottom right is less opaque and I'm not going to bore you guys but we do also have multiple other changes here as well so for the left right stereo balance that's changed for headphone accommodations you can see that has also changed and a few other ones down here as well so a lot of changes to the control center here specifically the icons in beta 5 and we talked about how the control center had bigger icons but it looks like on the lock screen when you go to customize the lock screen controls the glyph icon inside is slightly smaller in beta five so it seems like the lock screen icons are smaller but in the control center they've gotten larger and also in the control center we have a better now playing gradient so the box has a better gradient than it did beforehand and it also shows up on the home screen now whereas that was bugged out in the previous beta also if you go into jiggle mode and go to edit in the top left hand corner we have a new option here for edit pages so if you tap on that that just takes you to this page here where you can show or hide your pages so before you could do that by just tapping on the icons here the page dots but that was kind of a hidden feature that's been a hidden feature for a while now so now Apple is making it a little bit more obvious that it's there by adding that to an option here when you press edit also if you go to edit and then go to customize you'll notice a slight change down here as well so before automatic was all the way over on the left but now it goes light dark automatic and then tinted so a slight change there to the order of the icon color changing menu options and then finally the recent emojis are back so recent emojis have been broken for weeks now but finally when you go into your emoji keyboard you will see your frequently used emojis there's a new splash screen for the home application so it now shows updates to control center where you can rearrange and resize them in the control center accessories on watch and customize access for guests now as far as performance goes performance feels really good here on beta 5 it's felt better Better than what I remember in the past definitely better than iOS 18.1 beta 1 and also the previous iOS 18 beta so we'll see how that you know goes over the next few days into next week but so far performance is excellent for me on my 15 plus now I did run a Geekbench 6 test before and after this update so on 
Beta 5 here, we scored a 2489 on the single core and a 6160 on the multi core. And before on Beta 4, we scored a 2442, so lower on the single core and a 5986, also lower on the multi core. So these don't always tell the full story, as I always say, but so far, performance does feel better in real life than it did on previous builds. So that is a good sign. And then as far as battery life goes, I don't have as good of a sense on battery life yet as I do on performance. That's a lot harder to judge off of just using this for a couple of hours, but I'm sitting at 70% right now. You'll have to go back to near the beginning of this video and see how much battery you know I've run through throughout this video. But so far, battery life seems fine. I can't really tell a big difference just yet, but if anything changes, I will let you know in my Apple Weekly episode on Saturday. Okay, so now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next up is going to be iOS 18 Beta 6. And I would expect that next week. So I think that we are finally going to be switching over to a weekly release schedule for the first time on these iOS 18 betas. So if that were the case, if I am correct in that you know assumption, that would mean that we have iOS 18 beta 6 next week, either on Monday the 12th or on Tuesday the 13th. Apple has released beta software on both Monday and Tuesday, so it's hard to say exactly which one, but I would expect it early in the week. Now, next week, I would also expect to see iOS 18.1 beta 2 for those that are on the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max. And we could get some of those changes that we saw here in beta 5 today on that next build of 18.1. And then I've had a few people ask me when we're going to see the RC build of iOS 18. I think that's going to be right around September 9th or September 10th. I think that's going to be the day that we see the RC. And I think we will see the final release of iOS 18 on Monday, September 16th. But of course, Apple will confirm that within the next month or so. So that is iOS 18 beta 5, a pretty major update because we did get the new distraction control in Safari, and we also got that pretty big change in the photos application. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on beta 6 videos and also when I release Apple Weekly on Saturday. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.